How's it going everybody? Stellar here. So you want to learn how to make a quick planet and I kind of came up with my own method after watching several tutorials of uh, A.D. Burroughs and Gleb Alexandrov. A couple of uh, people on YouTube, if I can find them I'll put them up on the screen now. As well as just a bunch of lurking through Reddit and asking some people that I knew who were also making planets. So we'll go ahead and get started deleting the cube. We're going to shift A, add mesh, sphere. And then on the sphere, I'm just going to do 258 by 128 for the segments and rings. So we have a nice smooth surface. You can also uh, subdivide it, but it gives you weird poles. So to avoid that, you just type in 258 by 128 or any really, any number that you want really. And that's pretty much it for the planet. We're just going to shade smooth. So next up, I'm going to add a camera in going to move this along the X. We're going to Alt R, rotate it Y by pressing R, Y, 9, 0, R, X, 9, 0, G, X. So now we have our camera. I'm pressing 0 to get into our camera view here. We have pretty much our scene set up. I'm going to add in a light, which is going to be a sunlight. I'm going to rotate it slightly move it over and then in the light the strength is really good between 5 and 8 so I like to go with 8 on the high end in our render settings here in our render properties you want to scroll down and make sure our look is on filmic high contrast or very high contrast it makes it look really well and I haven't messed with any of the gamma or exposure so I'm going to go into cycles mode here we're going to rotate the sun until we get a nice shape. I kind of like it when planets are cut off like that for whatever reason. It kind of gives you the ability to see the atmosphere. So go to the materials for this. We're going to give it new, name it planet. I'm going to open up the shading tab here in Blender and we'll go ahead and close that out. I'm going to go into cycles and press zero to get back up onto the camera and we're just going to click show overlays off. I'm going to leave the principal BSDF shader here and this is going to be a image based planet so it's going to be super easy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my planet that I've basically made for myself. So go over to your file explorer or do it the old-fashioned import way. I'm going to open it up in a file explorer and drag in my planet textures that I've made. Okay, now that we have our planets, our textures imported, uh, I have a moon that I made mixing both Mars and the moon in Photoshop, so that was pretty easy to make. I just kind of bashed those two together. And then this one here is the planet Dambada. <laughs> I think that's a pretty funny planet name, but I got this one off of Gumroad. I'll put the artist name on the screen now uh, for like $2. So I went ahead and picked that image up and created normal maps for both of these using uh, smartpage.net slash smartnormal. I'll link that in the description. You basically just drag and drop an image into it and it'll produce a normal map for you. So to get this set up super simple, all we're going to do is plug in our moon texture to the base color. We're going to shift A, add a normal map. We're going to do color into color, normal into normal, and we're going to change this to non-color just so it doesn't make it so horrible. And as you can see, we can kind of see the normal strength of working, but it sometimes is a little bit off. So we can fix that by adding a mapping texture coordinate node just by pressing Control t with node wrangler so i'm going to click this image here Control t and it gives me these nodes here so i'm just going to grab these and move these out of the way and the scale for the normal is slightly off because of that website i could fix it but i'm a little bit lazy so in my fixings it is 1.07 i believe yep 1.07 kind of brings back the normal to look proper 
for this image at least and you might run into the same issue as well you could always just make sure the resolutions match so okay now we're going to add in a mix shader node we're going to plop that right between the BSDF and the output I'm going to go ahead and grab another BSDF by just copying and pasting that plug this input into the second shader output here and we can go ahead and move our normal back up here I don't know why I moved it down there moving too fast for my brain to work so now we have the normals set up for both our planets make sure that's what set to non-color so if we cycle through we can see that we have two different planets right and we want to be able to control the planet to make new planets so we could always mix this together and it looks like a pretty decent planet as is anybody can mix two things together and it will look pretty cool but we can take it a step further by grabbing these adding in a, another image texture. So go through, find a good image texture that you want. I'm just going to pick a image texture that I made a little while ago. And it's just going to be a roughness map of a planet texture that I made. It can literally be anything. I made this one in Substance Painter just to kind of get a really decent design. So if I show you what it looks like, it's kind of this shape here. <laughs> So I'll, I'll have a link to this image in the description so you can go and download it and tweak, the, tweak your planet the same way if you want to follow exactly. So we plug that back into surface. If we add a color ramp, go ahead and undo that because I plugged that in wrong. So if we go from color to factor and then from factor to the mix shader down here This will control the factor of our mix. So if I just plug that into surface and we kind of Pinch together what we're looking like Just so we have definite blacks and whites we can use this to mix the two planets So if you see we can kind of play with the mixture on how how we want it to look we can also invert it to get some pretty cool designs as well so if we do that we have a nice mix of a planet and we can take it even a step further just by a hue and saturation node or an rgb curves node either which way and a lot of this i learned from like i said 80 burros and glev and alexandrov's video on their space vfx course as well as a few other YouTube videos and reading and just testing on my own. But it's really simple and you can do this all with free images or generated images. So now that we have our planet set up the way we want, I'm going to go here to the surface, go ahead and make that black, and we're going to do our atmosphere now. So make sure we have the sphere selected. I'm just going to do Shift D and right click to set it in its spot. And we're going to scale it up just a little bit and we're going to name this one clouds give it a new material name it clouds as well and for this i went to the nasa website and got their earth clouds map that they make an 8k texture map i'm just going to drag and drop it in um, and if you're wondering by now, if you've made it through this video and you've gotten this far and wondering why is it looking good and working, we haven't even unwrapped it. Because when you add in the sphere, everything is unwrapped and it'll work accordingly. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to unwrap anything. This is true lazy planet making. So if we jump back over to shading here, go to our clouds, we just plug in the color into the alpha channel here we now have clouds we can control the color of the clouds via a color ramp as per usual with clouds so you can 
lighten, darken them. You can change the color and composition of the clouds if you want. So if you want pink clouds, you can. So I'm going to go with some slightly yellow clouds. So we're going to add a bump node. Color into the height, normal into the normal. And that will give our clouds some actual height ripples, but we definitely want to turn down the strength a little bit. So something like that. So we can also adjust the height of the clouds because it's just on a sphere. So if we want shadows with our clouds, we can definitely get those shadows. So I'm just going to scale it to about right here. And then the final step, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the sphere. Shift D, right click to keep it in its spot. Scale it up a little bit more past the clouds, just slightly. And we're going to change this to atmosphere. For the atmosphere, we're just going to delete the principal BSDF and just get a simple volume scatter node. Place it into the volume. Change the volume to a blue color. And we have our basic planet. We can bump the intensity up to 8 for a real cloudy planet, real milky looking atmosphere. You can turn it down and you can also control the atmosphere with some noise. So if we were to bring in a noise texture and then add that into the color, you can see we have quite a col colorful atmosphere if we were to scale it up a little bit. We could have a multicolored atmosphere, or we can just plop it into the factor here, turn up the distortion a little bit, and we can have kind of a distorted looking swirly atmosphere. So if we want to make our atmosphere look a little bit better instead of it being this white color, uh, we're going to go ahead and just slap that into the surface and bring the factor up to the color here so we can see what we actually have going on. So I'm going to decrease the scale just a little bit and decrease the distortion a little bit here and we're going to increase the detail all the way up so it looks nice and visible and with this color ramp all we're going to do is just kind of pinch it in so the swirls are a little bit more visible than what they were and we're going to change this to a nice blue color and we'll just go ahead and plug that into the color and remove the surface so we still have that nice blue haze but with the swirl design so i'm going to render this out and we'll see what it okay now that the planet's done rendering this is what our result looks like it, as you can see we have some shadows in our clouds the resolution isn't as good as i was hoping it would be it's only 1080p and with 500 samples so it could definitely be better but this is just a quick one render that i wanted to show you we do have that nice swirling effect with the atmosphere. We can always layer up clouds, different clouds. You can make them with noise textures, any kind of texture input, be it with nodes or an actual image that you've generated or found yourself. You can do it for both the planet, the atmosphere, and the clouds. And it's super simple with just, like I said, a single light set up as the sun and that sunlight is only at a strength of 8. We can also change the color of all that too. We can add volumetrics within our scene to give it some space dust and stuff like that, but to wrap this video up I just wanted to show you guys the ability that you can get with just some simple nodes and everything. It's not as complex as it ought to be, uh, like a lot of people like to show it is. I just wanted to show this simple setup for those of you who are interested in making planets for your scenes so you can show off spaceships or you just want to make some planets. It's not as complex as everybody makes it out to be and it can be a lot of fun especially if you nail down the workflow. Like I said I did want to give credit where credit is due. A lot of this inspiration came from A.D. Burroughs and Gleb Alexandrov from their Space VFX tutorial as well as the listed on screen YouTube channels that I used to get some inspiration for lighting and node setups as well as just my own messing around with it. So we're going to take this scene one step further to wrap up the video and by doing so 
we're just going to jump over to our compositing tab here. And if you don't have it up here, you just hit the plus sign, go to general, or VFX, wherever it is. Yeah, VFX, it's under compositing, so that's where it is if you don't have it. We're going to click use nodes. Give this node some room here. We're going to add a viewer node. Then under the end pan the end panel here, it's a little hard to see because I have a different theme. But we're going to go to node. Actually, we're going to go to view, sorry. And we're just going to zoom out to where we have kind of the full picture of our planet here. We're going to go ahead and delete the compositor the composite node and just plug in viewer. I'm going to do shift A, add lens distortion. We're going to do a distort of 0 0.01, a dispersion of 0 0.001, and we're actually just going to play with the dispersion until we get a nice uneven haze around the edge where it kind of looks like an image from a satellite instead of a render so play with the distortion a little bit and the dispersion till you get something that you like you don't want to blow it out too much but a little bit of dispersion especially along the top of the image here is a lot it makes it look a lot nicer so lens distortion we're going to do separate rgba Combine RGBA and we're going to add in three transforms. So Shift D, Shift D. So we're going to plug the red into the image on the top, green into the image, blue into image, and then we are going to plug in their respected things once again. So image to red, image to green, image to blue. And with this, we are going to get a chromatic aberration effect. So if we zoom in just a little bit on our planet and change the offset to where we can kind of see the edge here, if we were to drag the blue channel over slightly, on the X value, sorry, we can start seeing a shift in the color on the edges here. So if we just do it ever so slightly, we'll have a nice chromatic aberration. So we're going to move the blue channel on the X by 2.4, and we're going to move the red channel on the Y by negative 2.4. So that kind of hazes up the image slightly. kind of gives us this blown out planet look and once we're done and happy with it we can go back to our composite node and just plug in the image let it do its computing and see what our final image looks like I hope this helps with creating planets I know it's a bit rusty and a bit kind of just thrown together but it does work and it leaves options to be explored and a lot of potential so I hope this helped you guys if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them down in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.